everyone. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor of the City, and we like to throw a party. Thank you for coming to our party. And there's a lot to celebrate. And while I have your ears, does anybody know who Johnny Appleseed was? Yes. He's a legend. He was born here in the city of Leominster, and it is his 250th birthday this year. And our parade is the 14th and the 15th. And if you'd like, you just received an invitation. So we're going to really, we're really going to extend. It's going to be like a year-long celebration. But he's been gone 250 years, and no one's ever said a bad word about him. That's unusual today. So anyway, uh, thanks for coming. and. Uh, and I hope you had a good uh, you know, travel out here. We live in a beautiful state, and it's nice to get out once in a while and drive around and, and, and see different parts of the state, but most of the people here are so busy sometimes, you just never really get that opportunity. Uh, the governor will be here shortly. Just to let you know, we have restrooms on either side. We have restrooms downstairs. There are four doors and exits to the building if you need to leave for some reason, and there's still food and drink here, and uh, it'll be here long after you leave. So. Uh, not to panic. Let me just, for a second, if you don't mind, because, you know, we're all part of, of government, whether it's state, federal, or local government, and um, it, it takes everybody. It takes a full team. And I have to tell you, uh, I've been mayor for 31 years, and I must tell you, I have like this incredible team that everyone would dream about, and, um, and it starts with the city council. So if you just allow me to just introduce them. Uh, Claire Frieder, Claire's over here, Brandon Robbins, Sue Shalifo, Susan Shalifo Zephyr, uh, Bob Tossi, he was going to be like beside himself today because we're getting a grant in his ward that for something he's been fighting for, uh, a attorney and local historian, and he wrote the book on uh, Johnny Appleseed in case you want to buy one, uh, City Council President Mark Bedanza that's back there, and Peter Angelini, those are the city councils that are here in attendance, and many of our department heads and city workers, and I don't just say that, again, in 31 years, I could tell you a lot of stories, but I can tell you right now, it's the A-team. So thank you to everyone for whatever part you do here. Um, we make government work, and people should expect that. And it shouldn't be a big bonus when something good happens. It should be something that everybody expects. Good people deserve good government. Now let, let me just introduce <coughs> our Secretary Tepper uh, for some remarks. Secretary, welcome back. been accused of... There we go. That's good. Yeah. I'll, go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll. I'm not even going to use That's why I do everything from just whatever, because I always lose my notes, and I can't stick to them, so. Well, we've all had the my notes are not here moment, so um, thank you so much for having us here today. You know, this is one of our favorite days of the year, is the announcement of these awards for the MVP awards, and I always say about this program that it's one of my favorite programs because it is community centric. You know, towns know where their vulnerabilities are. They know Main Street floods every time X happens, right? And you know that you don't have a place to go for your elderly people to go when it's really, really hot. So the idea of this program where you get to the community cuts to bring together, the other thing I love about it is the community is thinking about these things together and doing a plan for um, no noticing where all their vulnerabilities are and doing a plan for what the town can do about it. But the best thing is then we also have action grants and action grants help towns actually do this stuff in their plan. I have said many times to my team this last year, I'm done with the plans, let's just act. And I love this part of the program because we don't stop at the plans and we continue to act. And you'll see that several of the uh, winners today are two-time, three-time winners. They, they, got, they got their planning grant, now they're getting their action grant, and then they're getting an act, the finishing up of an action, action grant later. So really, um, really love this program, and, and I know you all do too. Um, how many people are here who are, have, are winning a grant today? That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> You know, that's, um, that's $52.4 million um, that is going out today. Yeah, 
and it's, I always like this part of the event too, we go around and just talk to people about what their, what their projects are, because everybody's so excited about their project, because they've worked on it, they've worked on it with their neighbors, they've thought a lot about it, they've talked to other towns about what they're doing, and so it's just a really good opportunity to hear from other towns, from towns to learn from each other, and from um, towns to, to tell us a little bit more about, about what you're doing. Um, and certainly, the mayor here throws a very nice party. Thank you. Yeah, he, you know, he's got food, he's got, you know, so thank you very much. And um, I do remember um, the last time I was here was not on um, as good of a day. Um, it was the day after the floods. Um, the governor and I were here. Um, the mayor took us around and showed us where the damage was, and it was very extensive. Um, and it sort of re up to our goals to make sure that this program is strong, but also to have a disaster relief program and to make sure that people were compensated from that particular flood as well. Um, did a lot of fundraising for that. Um, and doubled down on this particular program. Um, we gave $7 million more this year to this program than we had before. Um, and so that's why we're able to give so much money um, this year, the most, the most that we have given so far. So I, just, I guess I just want to start quickly with some thank yous. So um, first, uh, we have a lot of mayors here, which is great. Um, we have Mayor uh, Ballantyne from Somerville, um, Mayor uh, uh, Pen Pen I can't pronounce your name. Pengallo, thank you, from uh, Somerville and Mayor Fuller from Newton. We also have um, Senator John Cronin here. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate you coming after a long night. And Rep. Natalie Higgins. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you for coming. They had um, a very long night last night, so I'm surprised they're even out of bed, let alone here with us today. Um, we also have with us today the state's first, actually the nation's first climate chief and my good friend Melissa Hoffer. And I also, we also have some um, very important members of our team here. Uh, Undersecretary Maria Blen Power, who is our Undersecretary for Environmental Justice and Equity is here. Behind me. <laughs> yep. Uh, our Assistant Secretary for Resilience, some of you may know her already, Maya Mansfield. And from our MVP team, who I hope many of you already know, are Marissa Robinson, uh, Hillary King, and I think a bunch of other MVT regional coordinators and staff. So if you could just like raise your hand. As, as I'm sure you know, this, this team is a dedicated team, uh, and they work really hard to try to select projects that are going to be able to be used in one town, but also maybe be able to use in another town afterwards, um, really thinking ahead about the best way to, to use the money. So I, um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about um, Lemonster and sort of how um, they are going to be benefiting from two grants um, this, uh, for this round. Um, the first is going to help bolster flood resilience in vulnerable neighborhoods, and the second is being granted to the uh, Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission to develop map-based tools documenting lessons from the 2023 flood for future resilient efforts. So Lemonster's journey from last year's devastating floods to today is inspiring. This is a community that rose to a challenge and has come back stronger. The city's dedication to moving forward by, pursu by pursuing these two important grants exemplifies the forward-thinking approach to preparedness. So congratulations, city of Lemonster. <laughs> So we're also going to be providing funding to support 71 local implementation projects across the state. This includes 56 individual, uh, 58 individual municipalities, six regional groups, and two tribes.
This year, we're funding 24 projects that go beyond planning and design to putting physical solutions in the ground with 17 projects receiving over a million dollars each. Among these implementation grants are $5 million grant to the cities of Everett and Chelsea to protect environmental justice communities and critical regional infrastructure, a $3 million grant to Daylight Estream and Athol, and a $1.7 million grant to the town of Mashpee in collaboration with many partners, including the Mashpee Wapanoid tribe. And I was just hearing from the mayor of Newton about their, their very large grant and what they're going to do with it. So I'm really excited to have you here, Mayor, and to tell, tell us about your project. So, you know, this shows that we're not just planning, but we are actively implementing real solutions. And it also shows that projects that started out in the planning phase a few years ago are maturing to construction with the, con with the consistent support of the MVP program year after year. So the dedication that you all are providing um, and to help keep improving and expanding this program, and we're committed to building resilience through sustainable, equitable pathways for to, at a local level. That commitment, as you may know, is also, is also in alignment with many of our other efforts. Our capital investment plan, unveiled in June, took a big step towards a seven-fold increase in funding for climate resilience. This investment supports the implementation of Resilient Mass, our statewide climate adaptation program, and our Resilient Coast program. We celebrate these investments in communities. So we just want to thank you all for coming today. Congratulations to all the recipients. Um, I look forward to hearing a little bit more after the program about what you're doing. And now I have the honor of introducing uh, Melissa Hoffer, our climate chief. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am super excited to be here today in Lemonster to celebrate these important grant awards. And, you know, I was thinking it was almost a year ago when I was sitting in my home office one evening, uh, not far from here, I live in Barrie, and the rain was pounding. It was just dumping in buckets. And I was actually drafting the climate recommendations for the governor and I got an alert on my phone. And it was a kind of alert that I had never received before. It said that the rain was causing a life-threatening situation. And it said that I shouldn't leave my home. And that was the night that 10 inches of rain fell on Lemonster. So I remember a couple months later when we came to see Mayor Mazzarella, and he shared the story of walking into a room in a building that had been flooded and opening a desk drawer only to find a fish in it. So we talked about the land here and the history of the land. You know, Lemonster used to, like many, many towns across Massachusetts, used to have a lot more wetlands to help absorb and store those floodwaters. It used to have more pervious surface for the rain to go. You know what that's like when the rain comes and it, it hits the ground and it sinks in, but if it hits a road or a parking lot, it doesn't. And we talked about nature-based solutions that can help prevent a flood like that from ever happening again here. And now, you all are taking that first step. We know, yeah, that's right. So we know what the future looks like if we don't take action on climate. We saw it last September here in Lemonster. We saw it last summer in Western Mass. We see what our, our sister state in Vermont is dealing with, devastating catastrophic damage again on the one year anniversary of its flood. We've seen the fires, we know the heat. And we know the cost of inaction. Believe it or not, Massachusetts has had 45 confirmed climate disasters in the last 44 years, totaling over $1 billion each. That's just the storm damage. And that doesn't count the hardship the suffering that communities go through, that people endure, and it doesn't count the many other costs, the hidden price that all of us are paying for uncontrolled climate pollution. The good news is we know that we still have time to do what we need to do, but we don't have a lot, because we really got to get to it. And that is sharply reducing reliance on the fossil fuels that are causing climate change and making our communities, and when I say that, I'm not just talking about the infrastructure. 
I'm not just talking about a new pump station. I'm talking about the people. We have to make ourselves more resilient to deal with these changes that are coming, to make our communities stronger. So right now, the Climate Office is working with Administration and Finance, with the Department of Transportation, with our colleagues at EEA, to study the investment that's needed to zero out emissions by 2050 and meet our key resilience needs. And we are laser focused on finding common sense strategies that are gonna allow us to make that down payment on a healthier future, on a more resilient future, and on our clean energy future. So Potsdam Institute recently showed that the cost of these ongoing climate damages just for the pollution that's already been emitted, like you could shut down all the climate polluting machines today and we'd still be locked in for these damages. So just for those emissions, it's gonna cost six times more to deal with those damages than it would to limit global warming to a safer level of two degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels. That's a little under three degrees Fahrenheit of warming. So what that tells us is that it's a really, really good deal to take the actions that are gonna help us avoid even more costly climate damages in the coming decades. That's the stuff our kids are gonna pick up. It tells us that investing in clean energy is a bargain, that investing in preserving the natural ecosystems that draw down carbon from the atmosphere, that's a bargain. And making investments like today's in these communities in Lemonster and making these investments to make our communities more resilient, that is a bargain. Governor Healy understands what our towns and our cities are experiencing. And we knew we had to find a way to help, especially in those times when federal relief may not be available. So that's why we are very, very proud that the budget that the governor just signed on Monday includes a brand new, this is a first ever for Massachusetts, Disaster Response and Resilience Fund, and that was proposed by your governor. Now, that was initially capitalized with $14 million, so we're going to continue to grow it, and that money's going to be there for families, it's going to be there for businesses, it's going to be there for cities and towns, and it's gonna allow us to build back better and more resiliently so that when these storms come again, because they will, our infrastructure and our communities will be stronger. So look, we know we have some rough road ahead, right? We've seen it. But we also know what we are made of here in Massachusetts. We've seen that. Just look at Lemonster's example. So we stand together, and together we're gonna create a better future. And now I'm very pleased to introduce Glenn Eaton, the Executive Director of the Montachusett Regional Planning Commission. Thank you. Uh, good day. Uh, I think all of you who know me that, uh, Jeff, would you come up, please? All of you who know me uh, will love to hear that I'm going to be brief. I've timed this under two minutes, uh, so, so we'll be okay. Uh, the word team and teammates and colleagues was mentioned a couple of times by prior speakers. Uh, people at the top of an organizational chart have the privilege of accepting grants and, and so on and so forth. And for my first time in 38 years in public service, getting to introduce the governor of Massachusetts. But Jeff, Jeff Legoro is a senior planner with Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission, or MRPC. He wrote the grant. And uh, it would be a, a shame on, on, on me if we didn't talk about our teammates and colleagues. Uh, uh, lastly, before I get into my remarks, I will say, and I will not mention the employee's uh, name, but on September 11th, yes, we too have stories, and we will never forget December of 20, uh, 2008 with the ice storm. We'll never forget September 11th, 2023, uh, and we'll never forget what a, what a colleague of mine did at the office by wading into chest deep water uh, to save a truck driver who couldn't swim uh, below Route 12 on, on Route 2 and that. Uh, I won't mention his name, but I will point. Governor Healy, Madam Secretary Tapper, Mayor Mazzarella, uh, Senator Cronin, Natalie uh, Higgins, Representative Higgins, distinguished and invited guests on behalf of the Montachusett Regional Planning Commission. We appreciate the receipt of the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness uh, MVP Grant Award. You are not only helping MRPC and Lemonster with our grant award, but also Amherst, Athol, 
uh, uh, Somerville, so many other communities. Franklin Regional Council of Governments as well. Linda Dunleavy and Allison are here from FERCOG. Uh, and you're also helping Lemister's leaders and inhabitants to document and assess the events of September 11, 2023. The work will provide useful information for future planning and increased community resilience, which will directly assist the City of Lemonster with documentation, resources, tools, and capacity building needed to respond and recover from this event and others like it. Further, it will guide future climate resiliency efforts, not only in Lemonster, not only in our region, uh, hopefully not only in Massachusetts, but elsewhere in the United States. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but neither a picture nor 1,000 words alone can even begin to tell the full story of the impacts of the thousand year storm and flood event that the city of Lemonster experienced on September 11th, 2023. That was Jeff's line, I love it. Through this project, we will aim to show and tell that full story. The project will be a true community project, a project for the community with information provided by the community and with the long-term interests of the community and surrounding communities in mind. A project for the city of Lemister and its people and a model for others. We are looking forward to beginning the work ahead. And I do want to recognize also we at my office includes not only people uh, like senior planner Jeff Legro, Tracy Murphy is here also, senior planner, uh, and their immediate supervisor Karen Chapman, director of planning development who could not be here. It is my true privilege and honor to introduce the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Governor Healy. Thank you. So, um, I don't know how to explain what a 12 inches of rain is like, but um, when it started, it was quick. It's one thing I could tell you. I always talk, heard about this flash flood stuff, and I always thought it was the, you know, the area where the bridge floods and some fool like me when I was 16 tried to get through my 64 Plymouth Valiant and didn't make it. Now I understand. And, uh, and I'll just tell you, uh, uh, 40 minutes into this, we knew we were in trouble. 40 minutes. And I got a phone call. Uh, and on, on the other end, it was a lady's voice. And she says, this is Mara. I said, Mara, no, you gotta understand, hundreds of 9-11 calls are coming in. Everybody's, it's every part of the city. It's getting worse by the minute. And she said, it's Mara. I said, Mara who? <laughs> and she said, like, after 31 years, everybody has your phone number, right? The lights go out, they call you. How come the lights went out? How come cable went out? I'm watching the Super Bowl or whatever. And she says, Mara, it's a governor. I said, okay. <laughs> she says, what do you need? I said, help. Within minutes, Jonathan Gulver doesn't live far from here, the fire marshal's office, mass dot. Underwater divers, bridge inspectors, mass emergency management, um, DEP, firefighters, just people just came in. The Massachusetts State Police, even though Route 2 was closed, they brought in state police all at the urging in the direction of the governor. Within seconds. We had another three and a half hours of this. And uh, I never really got to formally thank her, but I have something for you. And she never went away. She was here the next day. <laughs> yeah. She was here the next day, and she never left. And we stayed in touch, and she sent help. And it was weeks that we were together um, with this. It's devastating, but we're all neighbors, and we've got to help each other. And that's what's important. And she cares about each of your communities. She cares about us. And she'll do whatever it takes to help, whatever it takes. Trust me, within minutes, help was here. And you don't know what that feeling is like. but. As a special thank you, the plastic pink flamingo was created here in Lumminster in 1957. And I know your environmental sort of views, so this is 100% recycled. <laughs> it's made in the United States, and so is the box made out of recycled materials. So, Governor, a little token of our appreciation, along with the two pairs of pink flamingo socks, nice. our two original Featherstone pink flamingos. <laughs> I love this. For somebody that has everything. <laughs> For somebody that has everything. I want to see my socks. Oh my God, check this out. This you don't awesome. have to put them on now, though. No, but 
it. It's okay. Really? Do you guys all have these at home? <laughs> <laughs> you should. <laughs> Levenster's own, the original. Amazing, right? Awesome. I'm going to put them out on the lawn at the State House. The bear, just so you know, in the driving spot, the parking spot in, Man in Newton at the mayor's spot, I got a picture for some of the people that live there that I know, and there's two pink flamingos in her driving spot, in her driving parking spot. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you so much, Mayor. Um, that, that really warms my heart, I got to say. Um, it's really great to be here. I'm sorry I screwed up everybody's day. Um, we started this a little bit later, but thank you for accommodating. We um, did some transportation stuff here this morning, coming into the 21st century now with, you know, uh, just touch and go, so you can ride a subway, which is a good thing, about time. And, um, and then I did the ice bucket challenge. You guys know that, that one? Did you all do it? Yeah. It's a, it's a 10 year anniversary of that. And Pete Brady's was raised, I mean, he's now deceased, but what an amazing hero. Over a billion dollars raised for ALS. And I was supposed to dump water on somebody else, but I got there and in the moment, and it just felt right. It was also a thousand degrees, so um, I had to go dry my hair. But here we are, and this, it just couldn't be better than to be here in Lemonster. And I want to thank you, Mayor Mazzarella, for always opening up uh, your, uh, your doors here to me and to my team. And um, I just really want to thank you for the partnership. It is crazy thinking back on those storms, on the flood. And I see the guys from DPW and fire and EMS and police and others from the city, um, you know, out there just trying to, to make do in a really unbelievable time. Never seen anything like it. You know, we were on the ground touring later, shortly thereafter, and the destruction um, was unbelievable, you know, how that whole bridge was wiped out. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And we did uh, put the charge to, to our team and the administration, let's pitch in, let's do whatever we can uh, to help. It was the first time I realized that DEP actually has boats. No, DCR has boats, who knew? But, you know, it was like whatever we could deploy, uh, we wanted to deploy. So um, I'm just really, really grateful to be here today. It's, um, it's really great to see so many of our local leaders joining alongside Mayor Mazzarella. I want to thank the mayors uh, for the work that you do day in and day out, you know, and we've got town administrators and managers here as well, but the work that's done across our great 351 cities and towns um, is, uh, is, is possible because of, of, of your, your guys' leadership. So thank you so much for that. Um, unlike Washington, um, people like us, we all have to actually balance budgets. So I, again, I appreciate what you, <laughs> the work that you do and uh, what we were able to, to sign the other day. Speaking of signing things, I want to acknowledge my colleagues in the legislature. Um, this district is so well represented by Representative Natalie Higgins and Senator John Cronin. Thank you. There you are. I, um, I mean it, they're great, great champions. We have uh, Councilor DiPaolo here as well, nice to see you, and um, members of our own administration. You heard from a couple of superstars, our climate chief, Melissa Hoffer, she's the first in the country to have the position, and our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, um, our Under Secretary of Environmental Justice and Equity, Maria Belen Power, that's a new position too that we created, and our Assistant Secretary of Climate Resilience, Maya Mansfield. So thank you, team. Um, look, uh, as I mentioned, I was here, I was on the ground, I saw the devastation that you all endured. And I've been to other communities in just my short 18 month tenure, seeing like the impact of severe storms and floods and the like. And what you endured, um, unfortunately, is something that's been visited on a lot of communities around the state. But I also saw a community that was so resilient in its spirit and its way to come back. And we were proud as an administration to distribute $20 million in relief funds and securing federal disaster assistance. We're gonna be able to, uh, to move quickly 
the next time around because as was mentioned, we have created for the first time ever a permanent disaster relief fund in this year's budget, which I signed this week. And again, this stuff is really important because cities and towns don't have the money, don't have the wherewithal to be able to do this stuff. And so I, again, really want to thank Senator John Cronin for his advocacy and leadership and Rep Higgins for making sure that we were delivering for communities like Lemonster now and in the time ahead. We also want to make sure that we are shifting from purely reactive right, responses to proactive work so we can head off some of the damage so that these guys in the back don't have to go through the nights and the weekends that they went through months ago. And that means building in more resilience. And that gets to the heart of today's grants, right? The MVP program, municipal vulnerability preparedness, you know, this is how we help our communities help themselves. I was really pleased that we were able to award $52 million um, in this grant round. It is the largest round of funding like this in our state's history. And, and we know here in Lemonster, did you brag about the two projects that you're getting funding for? Well, I'm not good at bragging. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. <laughs> well, you, you know, did? We'll, I know we'll, you. We'll, I do we'll, know we'll, you. We'll, we'll, okay, good. That's awesome. Two, two of these projects just for Lemonster alone. But we've got, how many projects are we funding? 56, 56 or 7, like a lot, all right, all around the state. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, and, and this is important to us because we are working to really align. And again, thanks to the great leaders in the legislature, we've got 1% of our budget going to energy and environmental affairs issues, building sustainability, building resistance. That's a really good thing. Our capital investment plan, which we also just released, took a big step forward with a seven-fold increase in funding for climate resilience. And that, um, that's a big deal. You know, we've, we've decided we're going statewide, right? That's what resilient mass is. So we're gonna have a statewide resilience plan. The other thing is that we've got an economic development strategy. An economic development strategy that puts climate at the center of it, okay? Because actually here in Massachusetts, we've got killer companies out there that are actually developing and devising the technologies that are gonna help us move to renewables, gonna help us decarbonize manufacturing, transportation, housing, and also provide the kind of resilient and sustainable infrastructure that we actually need for the modern times. So that's going on and that's a great thing. So look, I just wanna say congratulations to all the awardees um, today. And I wanna thank you because behind every award, there are people that spend a lot of time planning, doing the applications, right? Um, and I just wanna, we really wanna thank you guys. Keep doing it, we need you to keep doing it. And together, you know, we're gonna find ways to, uh, to, to continue to support that. So great job today, everybody. This is a, a feel-good moment here, and, and you should feel good about things. Um, we got an important, thank you also to Senator Cronin and Rep. Higgins, an important housing bill, top priority. We now have the largest housing investment coming your way because I know here in Lemonster and all over, Housing is too expensive, people can't afford rents, kids can't afford to live here. So that's an awesome, awesome accomplishment that we were able to do. The other thing I'm proud of, and I know it means a lot to this community, is we just signed a veterans bill. Well, I'm gonna get it to sign, but I'm gonna sign it. Um, passed last night, a great veterans bill. You know, Massachusetts, we've gotta always lead when it comes to standing up for our military families. So with that, I want to turn the podium over to my friend, a great partner on so many fronts, whether it's on resilience, whether it's on housing, you know, whether it's on childcare, you name it, Senator John Cronin is there. Welcome, Senator John Cronin. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, today is really about celebrating how municipalities and our Commonwealth is going to be better positioned for se severe climate events in the future. But I, I really do want to return to where we were on September 11th, 2023. Because when everything that can go wrong does go wrong, you want to have professionals around. And that's what happened in the city of Lemonster on September 11th. 
And when you consider the dozens of recoveries that happened uh, rescuing seniors from their homes and the hundreds of businesses and residences that were evacuated, the only reason there wasn't a major loss of life on September 11th is because of the professionalism, the competence, and the courage of our police, our fire, and our emergency responders. So thank you. And, and in my opinion, it was their finest hour, and they are second to none. So very grateful for that. As the mayor mentioned, the next day, the governor dropped everything she was doing, and she was on the ground. And she went back to the State House, and she made a commitment to make state government work for this community and to make our city whole. In December of 2023, there was a supplemental appropriation of $15 million because we didn't have money at the state level to respond to the scale of the destruction that occurred. 3.6 million from that appropriation in 2023 is gonna to go to the city of Leominster. 1.1 million dollars is gonna to go to the city of Fitchburg and Mayor Squalia for severe flooding that occurred in Fitchburg in August. And we are now celebrating today that we are going to be better positioned for those events when they occur in the future. So Governor, thank you for your leadership and thank you for standing by the city of Leominster in our darkest hour and making us whole again. Thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. I'm Natalie Higgins, the state rep in Lemonster. Um, and if I'm a little incoherent, I still haven't been to sleep yet since we started session yesterday. So I just could not uh, wait to be here with the governor and her entire team. And just to echo everything that Senator Cronin said, and I see so many kiddos in the room. And when I get to speak to school classes, um, the one thing, the one policy idea that they bring forward consistently is how can we protect the environment? How can we make sure that this world is here for us? when we need it, and all of the work that the, our communities are doing are making sure that it's here for generations to come and that we're, we're sustaining this planet. And so I'm just really grateful to be here with all of you celebrating and making sure that we're doing all that we can uh, to protect this earth. Thanks. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Thank you for visiting. If we as partners can ever help you, let us know. There were many communities that stepped in to help us out. And it's John, our customer service rep. John is the first face that you see when you walk into City Hall. He's smiling all the time. I'm trying to get some smiles from him. Like, I, I need more of it. And he's, uh, it's his birthday today, and he wanted a picture with the governor. So. <laughs> I'm not a singer, so I know the mayor of Somerville. I've heard her sing. So, <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, what are we going to do now? Another picture with, with our grantees. Come on up, grantees. We're going to take a picture. Don't be shy. The faster you get up here, the faster you can get back to the cookies. <laughs> Should I move this or something? <laughs> 